Good morning, everyone. We welcome you this morning, and we invite you to stand to your feet with us if you are able to. If you're watching online, we welcome you as well. We encourage you to join us right where you're at. This morning, let us come before the Lord and fix our eyes on Him. For the Lord is good, and it is good to be in the house of the Lord to worship Him and to praise Him with our brothers and sisters. This is what we are to do. This is the church of Christ. So this morning, let us begin with uh, reading in the Psalms to posture our heart. It says, shout for joy in the Lord. O you righteous, praise befits the upright. Give thanks to the Lord with the lyre. Make melody to him with the harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully on the strings with loud shouts. For the word of the Lord is upright and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now verse 8 says, Let all the earth feel the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. Hallelujah. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart is glad in him because we trust in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, O oh Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. Hallelujah. It is in the name of the Lord that we put our trust. It is in the name of the Lord that we, we put our hope. For there is no one else who's faithful. There is no one else who's deserving of praise and worship. Lord, we invite you in this place, Lord. We are here to worship you, Lord God. We are here to praise you, Lord God. We are here to sing of your steadfast love, Lord. Come and have your way.
trumpet sound Oh may I then in him be found Dressed in his righteousness alone And faultless stand before
this morning with me and you are good tell them this morning you are good you are good Lord you're good and you've been good to me you're good Lord we thank you for your goodness this morning Lord the goodness overtakes us it draws us to repentance your goodness thank you for your goodness overshadowing us for your goodness overtaking us your goodness thank you for it Lord we worship you this morning hallelujah Amen. Welcome. You may be seated this morning. We're so glad you decided to join us this morning. You come here to join us here at Light of the Valley Church. If you're here for the first time, we welcome you. We're so glad that you've decided to join us. It is our prayer and our hope that you will experience the Lord this morning in a new way. God has been so good, and we expect that he's going to continue to be good. Because one thing about God is that he never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he was good to you yesterday, he'll be good to you today, and he'll be good to you tomorrow. Hallelujah. Come on. Do we have any praisers here this morning? (laughs) Yes, hallelujah. We're so glad that we're... You all are here with us this morning that we've come to praise the Lord, and uh, we've got, uh, we're going to be starting on the Word in just a minute, but before we do, for those who uh, may have known him, uh, Pastor Jim Venita has gone home to be with the Lord. He was the pastor of Abundant Grace Community Church in Edinburgh, and um, he's gone home to be with the Lord. Our prayers are with the family, of course, with the church. We, I was part of his ministry for several years, me and my family. Uh, where we participated and with within the church, and um, he was a huge blessing to my life. But he's gone home to be with the Lord, and we're so grateful for the work that he was able to do here in the Rio Grande Valley. So, if you will, with uh, just extend your hands with me in that direction, we're going to pray for him and his family, or for his family and the church family, I should say. Uh, Father, we just pray for uh, the the Venita family, Lord God. Um, And we pray for the church family as well over there at Abundant Grace, Father God, that your grace will continue to be on them. We pray for comfort in the hearts, Lord God, and for strength for them to continue, Lord God, for, Lord God, the legacy that he's left behind, 
Pastor Vinita, Lord God, we thank you for that, Lord, and we pray, Lord God, that it will continue through his children and through his children's children, Father God. We believe this done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to get started with the Word, but here at Light of the Valley, one of the things we like to do is uh, declare God's Word. So if you will, lift up your Bibles with me this morning, and we're going to declare this morning and say, this is the Word of God. It's not my opinion. It's not man's opinion. It's God's Word. And I'm going to allow God's Word to speak to me today. If you believe that, say amen. 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 How many know God still speaks today? Amen. One of the main ways he speaks to us is through his word. Amen. And uh, many times, uh, many people think that um, this is just a book. You know, but the Bible that, they, that we call the Bible is God's word to us. If you read it every day, God will speak to you every day. It is God's voice speaking to us today. Amen? So I would like to bring a message today uh, that I have entitled um, The Great Shepherd. You know, for, before I get into the message, though, uh, for those of us who have been fasting for the 21 days, today's the 21st day. Uh, for the exception of those who started late, then it's the 14th day. You know, we'll pray for you that the Lord will strengthen you for the coming week, for those who are uh, uh, going to begin their third week. But the rest of us who are on the 21st day, amen, we're here to celebrate, amen. We're celebrating, why? Because the Lord helped us through 21 days, and we believe that during the 21 days of prayer and fasting, that the Lord, you know, uh, we got a closer relationship with Him, a more intimate relationship with Him. We got direction from Him. At the same time, we got answers to prayer, Amen. That we got breakthroughs in our lives and in our families because of the fasting that, and the praying that we have done for the 21 days. Uh, when I said in the beginning, the reason we do 21 days of prayer and fasting is because we are giving the Lord an offering at the very beginning of the year of our lives. Amen? Believing that we're going to receive the harvest for the rest of the year of what we have given. Amen? Uh, fasting is a part of us humbling ourselves before the Lord. Amen? And uh, we believe that uh, God is doing great things, mighty things, and he's going to continue. Amen? Okay, so getting to the word, we're I'm going to bring a message that I have entitled uh, The Great Shepherd. And it has to do with the year 2023 that we are in. The year 2023 has already begun. Of course, we're already halfway through the month of uh, January. And um, uh, during this 21-day fast, uh, I decided to seek the Lord to see what He had in store for us this year, what He is saying to us for this year in 2023, because we've already established that God speaks. Amen? So I was seeking the Lord for that, uh, to see what He had in store for, for us, His people, for us as a church, for His children, uh, to hear what He was saying. And I didn't really want to read or hear what others were saying. I wanted to just hear for the Lord what what he had for us as, as a church and as a people. And, uh, and so that's what I did. And uh, so today that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be sharing with you all uh, what I believe God is saying to us for this year in 2023. And if we believe it, I believe we can receive it. Amen? If you believe it, you can receive it. It is for you. So uh, the Lord specifically, he's uh, led me to Psalms 23 and obviously, because uh, we're in 2023, and I went to Psalms 23, and really, when I went to Psalms 23 and I read it, I go, well, what does this have to do with, with the year 2023? Usually, because Psalms 23 is a very well-known psalm. A lot of people know it. A lot of people uh, know it by memory. It is used a lot in, uh, for comforting, for peace, in, in funerals, and so forth. And that's how this psalm is usually used. So when the Lord brought me to this psalm, I was like, well, okay, well... Uh, but little by little, the Lord b began to open up the psalm to me in a different way, telling me what this year 2023, uh, what it in, uh, how it holds within Psalms 23. Psalms 23 is uh, uh, is um, it, it, we're gonna it's gonna be emphasized this year. Psalms 23. Okay, this will be a year of emphasizing Psalm 23. It'll be the year of the Good Shepherd, the Great Shepherd. 
He will show himself strong as our shepherd this year. How many say amen? Amen. He will be our shepherd. He's always our shepherd, but he will show himself strong as our shepherd this year in 2023. So we're going to read Psalms 23. And for this, I ask that we stand to our feet for the reading of the word. I always ask that we stand for the reading of the word because I believe reading the word is so important. And, uh, you know, I was reading, I've been reading Nehemiah and Ezra and some of the Old Testament books. And we find in these books that uh, uh, when the scribes, the priests, and so forth would read the word, the people would stand in reverence to reading of the word. And sometimes they would read the word for a whole day or a half a day, and the people remained standing as they were reading the word. The reverence uh, re- that they had towards that. So we're going to read, beginning Psalms, tw- Psalms 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Father, we thank you for your word that we have just read. We pray, Holy Spirit of God, that you, your words would be spoken today. Holy Spirit, you would direct them to the hearts of the hearers this morning and that your word will be of comfort and of strength, Lord God, for this year in 2023. It will help them, Lord God, to see you and view you and have you as the great shepherd in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated this morning. So this will be a year of the great shepherd for us. It's going to be a year of supernatural provision for us, for God's people. You know, the word we read right now, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. I shall not want, meaning I shall not lack any good thing. It's interesting here that David here compares himself to a sheep and the Lord as his shepherd. He sees himself as a sheep and the Lord as his shepherd, meaning, uh, he, you see, David understood what it was, what it was like to be uh, a shepherd, because he himself was a shepherd before he, came, uh, before he became king. So he knew how defenseless the sheep were. Amen? He knew that uh, the sheep were weak, defenseless, and he's now comparing himself like this. He's saying, look, I'm just like them. The Lord is my shepherd. You know, meaning he, David saw himself, look, I'm weak and I'm defenseless and I'm a foolish person. But God, you, Lord, are my shepherd. So he turned it around and said, you are my provider. You are my preserver. You are my guide. And indeed, you are my everything. He was saying, look, I may be weak, but you're strong. You're my strength. I may be in need, but you're my provider. I may need protection, but you're my protector. Because he understood as a sheep, I need you. You are my shepherd. You're the one who's going to take care of me. Yeah. So this year, we need to see ourselves likewise like David. Helpless without the Lord. We need him as our shepherd this year. We cannot be depending on ourselves. We need to depend on the Lord. Amen? Many times we uh, live life uh, because everything is easy and going and we stop depending on the Lord because everything is just falling into place. But reality is we should depend on him every single day. That way when things get tough, we're used to depending on him. Amen? Amen? And uh, there are many people talking about, you know, a lack or shortage of food, a food supply. You know, the economy is not getting any better. And this is not just here in America. We're talking about worldwide, all over the world. And uh, in the midst of all this bad news, we can boldly say, just like David did here, that uh, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Amen? Amen. It doesn't matter how bad it gets, what we hear, what the news is saying, what it looks like. We can boldly declare, the Lord is my shepherd. I'm not going to be in want. He is my shepherd. I shall not be lacking any good thing. 
The Lord is my shepherd and my provider. He cares for me. He provides for me. He watches over me. He protects me. What's interesting here is David, everything that he's saying here, their words are, these words are present tense, meaning now. Not going to be. You praise God that he is going to be, but he's talking about the here and now. He is my provider. He is my protector. He is my shepherd. Amen? This is something we live in now. And we can declare that and say that. These, so then, the shepherd provides for his sheep, and Jesus will provide for you and me. Amen? So we prepare as well as we can, and we believe that whatever is out of our control, our good shepherd can take care of it. Amen? So, you know, Philippians 4.19 tells us what? The, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Then that's what we have to believe. If he's our shepherd, he's going to supply for all of our needs according to his riches and glory. Amen? So this will be a year of supernatural provision for God's people. You see, when others are strong, struggling, God's people will have all their needs met. Somebody say all. This means he will supply for all needs, body, soul, and spirit. Sometimes we think of needs, needs is only money, needs is only food. No, no. All your needs, body, soul, and spirit. You know that we, we, we consist of body, soul, and spirit, and every one of those has a need. But if he's our shepherd, I'm not going to be in lack in any one of those areas, in body, soul, or spirit. Amen? We have to believe that God will supply. He is our shepherd. So the Lord knows where to feed us because we're his sheep. That's why he leads us. That's why he guides us. So that's the other thing. We're going to be going through this psalm that not only is this going to be a year of supernatural provision that, because he's our shepherd, but I believe it's going to be a year of supernatural guidance. He's going to guide us this year as well. He, he, we read in Psalms 23, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. You know, with all that is happening around the world today, uh, it's easy to get overwhelmed, amen? It's easy uh, with not knowing what to do or who to believe or who not to believe or where to go for the right answers. It's amazing the way things are today. You hear the news say one thing and then they contradict themselves with something else. So it, it can be very confusing for a person who does not have Jesus as his shepherd. I believe there's a dividing line that is taking place in these days that we're living in. For, it is a dividing line forming between good and evil. Between the sheep and the goats. And between God's people and the people of the world. This year will be a year where God's people are supernaturally led by their shepherd, Jesus. In 2023, when the world is in chaos, when the world is in confusion... Or worried and anxious, Jesus, the good shepherd, is going to be guiding his people. He will lead us and guide us to quiet, green pastures of interior stillness. Anybody get that? He's going to lead us to places where we're going to be quiet, still. Where we're going to be, in other words, in the middle of a storm, we're going to be at peace. The world is falling apart all around us. We'll be at peace. We're going to be at peace. He leads us to these places where we will be at peace. He makes us lie down in green pastures, not in dry places, green pastures. You know, usually the, when we read this, the reference, most people think it's food. These are the green pastures. It's to food. To, to, and, and quiet waters, food, food and water. But really the reference is not to food here but to places of cool and refreshing rest. How many know we need that every once in a while? So he is promising us that he's going to take us this year to places of cool and refreshing rest. He will lead us to places of rest and where we will be refreshed, and he will lead us to still quiet places. Still quiet waters, it says, meaning inner stillness and quietness of the mind. We need that. We need quietness of the mind. You know that you can be 
sitting down right there, right where you are, and your mind can be going 100 miles an hour? God wants to lead us to places where your mind is still, quiet. Because that's where you find rest. When your mind is calm, when you let the Holy Spirit come and lead you to these places. These are places where we can, the reason for this, the reason God, Jesus our shepherd wants to lead us to these places, you want to know why? Because when you're still and when you're calm on the inside, you're able to hear his voice. So he wants to bring us to these places so we can hear what he is speaking to us, what he is saying to us. The, the, these are places where we can hear his voice. Jesus said that his sheep know his voice. They recognize his voice. Do you recognize his voice? It's possible if you don't recognize his voice, it's very possible it's because your mind is going too fast. You haven't come to a place where you've quieted down. You haven't let him lead you to a place where you can hear his voice. He wants to do that for you this year, bring you to these places. You will hear his voice more clearly than in previous seasons. And you're going to learn to follow where he is guiding you this year in 2023. He's going to lead us and guide us to places for a time of intimacy with him. And a time of refreshing this year in 2023. It's also going to be a year of complete restoration. His word says there in Psalm 23, He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for His namesake. To restore the soul is to revive it or relieve it. Especially when your soul feels like fainting. Have you, any of you ever been in that place where your soul is just downcast at a place where it just can't seem to go on anymore? Many of God's people have been going through some difficult times, especially this past year in 2022. This may be either in their marriages, their family, their finances, their health, or many other areas in their lives. It, it was just a difficult time, a difficult year. And this has caused a lot of heavy burdens on you and has tired you out to the place where you feel you cannot go on. The very depth of your soul has been downcast. But this is a year where God will restore you. You need to say with me this morning, say, God is restoring me this year. Okay, if you believe that, say it again. And he's going to do that. He will revive you with new strength and new energy. Because one of the things that happens is, is uh, when you're downcast and when you're down, your strength and your energy is gone to move on. God knows that you've been going through what you've been going through, and he's going to bring you where he can begin to anoint your head with oil and begin to deal with deep areas in your life. And he's going to begin to root out what does not belong there. You see, many of the reasons, the reasons we go through a lot of things that we go through is because we have things in here that haven't been dealt with. If we allow him to lead us to the places of rest and we begin to hear his voice, he, that's where he's going to come in and he's going to begin to deal with those deep things in the heart and begin to root them out if we allow him to. Why would he do that? Because he wants to restore us. Anybody here this morning? Say it again. God is restoring me. He wants to bring you out. He's going to root out those things that don't belong there. The good shepherd will compassionately and tenderly care for the wounded places of your heart. You may think that nobody cares and nobody sees those wounds in your heart. He's the good shepherd. He knows exactly what to do to heal those wounds. And he wants to heal all of your heart wounds this year so that you can be restored. You see, God wants to renew you so that you can feel God's presence again. So that you can know he is good. 
He's not only the great shepherd, he is a good shepherd. That, Jesus himself said that about himself. He declared that he was the good shepherd. Amen? I, I, I often thought about that. And I go, why would he declare himself a good shepherd? Because there can be bad shepherds. So he declares himself as the good shepherd. He restores or gives the enjoyment of life to his sheep. You, you got to think about that. That's, that's his purpose as a shepherd, to give the enjoyment of life to his sheep, to make sure they're taken care of, they're provided for. He restores you. The shepherd's, listen, the shepherd's heart, to, something begins to happen. What's in his heart begins to influence the hearts of the sheep. Uh, amen? So the shepherd's heart will influence our hearts for connections and for restorations of relationships. He leads us to paths of righteousness, meaning that he leads us in the right path is what he does. And that's what he's going to do this year. You see, many times the reason we're tired and frustrated is because we have not been following the right path. When you take a long way around to get to your destination, it tires you out, doesn't it? He wants to lead you to paths that bring you directly to your destination. His paths are straight, and he knows what lies ahead. So he knows what he's doing. If we will let him guide us, he will take us directly where we need to go. And we won't be tired or frustrated. He does this for his name's sake. Isn't that amazing? You see, for the sake of his reputation. God's name and character are implied here when David was saying this. Him restoring you falls in line with who he is. He does it because that's who he is. Who is it? He is good. Because he is good, he does it. It is his character. For the sake of his name, he keeps all of his covenant promises with his children. Hallelujah. You all missed a good place for a amen there. He keeps all of his promises. He is faithful to his people because his honor and reputation are at stake. He's a faithful God. He's a good God. So this will be a year of restoration for many of you. You got to say, this is my year. It's also going to be a year of protection, of divine protection. Many may think, well, do we really need protection? I mean, we live here in the U.S. You know, we're so used to here in the U.S. that uh, we have it easy in that we are not persecuted like in other countries for those who believe in Christ. In other countries, your very life is on the line for believing in Jesus. But you know things are changing. Laws are being passed where a man can marry a man, a woman can marry a woman, and pastors who deny to do that risk going to prison. Things are changing. If you think persecution is not coming to America, think twice. It's already here. But I'm telling you, this year will be a year of divine protection. God is going to protect his sheep. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You know that sheep cannot survive in the wild on their own? Sheep have absolutely no defense mechanism whatsoever. They can't survive on their own. They need a shepherd. With them all the time, protecting them, taking care of them. We cannot survive in this world without our shepherd guiding us either. You see, it's a bad world. <coughs> Excuse me. It's a bad world. Jesus said they hated me, they're going to hate you. If the world hated me, the world's going to hate you. 
You know, and we're sheep. And out there in the world, there's plenty of wolves that are ready to devour us. But praise God, we have a shepherd that's not going to allow that to happen. See, we need the Lord. You know, I read that shepherds uh, didn't use gates as we know them. Shepherds would keep, would sleep in the openings of the rock wall enclosures. In other words, the shepherds would be the gate. This was interesting when I read this. You know, you, because Jesus, remember he said in, in John chapter 10 verse 9, he said that he was the gate. He was saying that he was standing between us and anyone or anything that would try to enter in. Now, to, to really uh, help in our understanding of, of this, you all remember Job in the book of Job when it says that Satan came before God and that the, Satan accused that he, uh, Job that he couldn't do anything with him because he had a hedge of protection around him. You all remember that? Well, he had a hedge of protection, but that hedge had a gate. God was that gate. He asked for permission, that gate was open, and he came in and, and, and he did what, he, uh, what God said he could do to Job. You see, we are his sheep, but there's a gate around us. And the door, the gate, the, there's a complete hedge around us, and the gate is Jesus. Nobody can come in. Jesus is the gate. He's our protector. He's there taking care of us. Amen? You see... We will have seasons of going through valleys, absolutely. Walking through valleys of darkness and gloom, that's going to happen. We're going to have times of trouble, danger, and difficulty. That's going to come. I'm not telling you 2023 is going to be a year of no problems. Absolutely not. They're going to come. But the thing is, we don't have to fear because His presence will be with us. Because God says in His Word that if God is for us, who can be against us? Come on. If God is with us, what do we have to fear? Who can come against our God? The God who created the heavens and the earth, everything within the heavens, everything within the earth, visible or invisible, He created all things. This same God is the one who protects us and looks after us. Who can come against us if we are with God? We are in His divine protection. You see, dark valleys will lose their power. And we're going to walk more courageously, no longer opening a place to fear. Why? Because we're going to believe that He's leading us and He's guiding us. And He is with us as He leads us and He's guiding us. You see, if we believe that He's leading us in the right path, in the correct path, then even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we can trust that He will bring us through it because He is the one leading us through it. Amen? And if He's leading us through it, then we can trust that He is with us the whole time, every moment of it. There's never been a time or never will there be a time where He's going to leave you in the middle of the road. You know, God helps us all the way, all the way through it. We can trust that He'll bring us through it. We will see the shepherd's protection over our lives this year. The rod was used by the shepherd to count sheep. For us, it represents that we are counted as His sheep. Amen? In other words, it is an assurance that we are His. We belong to Him. Say this morning, I belong to him. See, the rod uh, was also, it, it was shaped as a hook at one end. Uh, and the reason for that, it was because any, any sheep that decided to want to go astray, he'd bring it back. The hook would get a hold of it and he'd bring it back into the fold. This is interesting uh, when we think of this because that's what, the, he, that's what he's going to do this year. Yeah. I believe that our shepherd will bring... He's going to begin to bring the lost sheep of his fold. You can see Jesus. There's one. Oh, there goes another one. And he's going to begin to draw them back into his fold is what he's going to begin to do. See, I believe that our shepherd is going to do that. And, and you know that the staff, that was the rod, the staff is an emblem of support to the weak. 
It was used to ward off the wild animals coming against the sheep. And for us, it is a defense against the devil and the powers of darkness. This gives us comfort to know we are protected by the Lord. Amen. The Lord, the rod and the staff symbolize His presence, protection, and guidance. We have no reason to fear. 2023 will be a year of our shepherd, the great shepherd's protection over us. It's also going to be a year of anointing, a fresh anointing. The word in Psalms 23 says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. You know, I was thinking about this as it says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And I was thinking about how would he do that? You know, or, or why would he do in the presence of your enemies having a table? How can that be so? Because think about this. If you're a soldier and you're in a war, and how are you going to eat right in the presence of your enemy? It's going to be a very quick meal. A very uncomfortable meal. Why? Because one eye is going to be on the food and one eye on your enemy. You don't know if suddenly that enemy decides to attack right in the middle of your meal. So then, for God to say, right in the presence of your enemy, I'm going to prepare a table. You're going to be able to eat and enjoy what you're eating in the presence of your enemy. You see what God is saying here? Look, you have no reason to fear. You're going to be so well protected in my presence, that you have nothing to fear, you, I'm going to prepare for you a meal, a, a table right, right there, right in front of your enemies. You see, he has, uh, uh, otherwise you'd have to be on guard all the time. But our shepherd will give us such peace this year that you're going to be able to enjoy a meal without being preoccupied about your problems or your situations you can enjoy your meal while others may be in a rush or an anxious or worried. And even when they're eating because of everything that's going on, you're going to be at peace enjoying the meal. Amen? You, others will see how God has provided for you. In this year, 2023, the Holy Spirit is going to set a banqueting table in the presence of your enemies. Our enemies are the principalities, authorities in the heavenly realms that are in rebellion against God. This verse also said that, you know, that before sitting down at the table, the host would anoint the honored guest with oil. We, we said in the New Testament as well with Jesus, they would anoint their heads with oil. Uh, you remember when Jesus went into uh, the houses to eat, he said, you, I came to your house. You didn't wash my feet. You didn't anoint my head with oil. It was a custom. They would anoint, anoint them with oil. The Lord wants to anoint you every day with the presence of the Holy Spirit. He wants to do that every day. And this year, I believe that the Lord is going to give you a fresh anointing, a new anointing. We will need the anointing to accomplish all that God has for us to do this year. You see, many people think the anointing is just for the pastor or the ministers. Each and every one of us need an anointing and have an anointing. And the reason God anoints us is because He has a purpose for your life. You're anointed because God has a purpose. The new anointing will come upon you this year to fulfill that purpose. To help you do what God has called you to do. The new anointing will begin to break. Listen to me. It will begin to break every yoke. Off of you. Off of your family. Off of your finances. Off of your health. Anybody here this morning? It's going to break that. We will see miracles begin to happen, being performed by those who begin to walk, to receive, and those who walk in this new, fresh anointing. You know that anointing oil is a symbol of gladness? The Bible calls it the oil of gladness. So we will see joy and gladness among the people of God who have been anointed. You see, this is important to understand because many of you through 2022 had a rough time. It was not a time of gladness. It was a sad time. But I want to tell you this new anointing is going to break that to where you're going to receive the oil of gladness. It will be a year where you will be glad, happy, rejoicing. Amen? Why? Because he's our shepherd 
and he's going to meet all of our needs. We're not going to have any lack, body, soul, or spirit. Amen? He's going to restore us, and he's going to anoint us as oil. God is going to take away your sorrow and fill you with gladness. Your cup will overflow. There's a difference between being full and overflowing. Amen? Overflowing, you always have an abundance, and it's so much overflowing, you got to give to others. Amen? So don't just ask the Lord to fill you. Overflow you. You've got to be a blessing to others. Amen? You see, it's time that we stop just asking the Lord, just fill me up. Oh, just me, me, me. No, no, no. God wants to use you. He wants to use you to bless somebody else. Others may need you. There's others that are hurting. There's others that need to hear God's word. You know, we carry, that's why the Bible says we're, we're jars of clay, but we, in us, in this earthen vessels, we carry treasure. What an amazing treasure we have. The Spirit of God living in us and abiding in us. We've got to be able to give that to others. And for that to happen, it has to overflow in our lives. And that's what God wants to do. Our great shepherd wants to do this year. He wants to make sure that our cup overflows. So 2023 will be a year of anointing, a fresh anointing, a new anointing on our lives. And I'm going to conclude with this. You know, the end of the psalm ends with, uh, it's a year of goodness and mercy. He says, surely goodness and mercy or love, depending on which translation, will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This, this is, you know, you, you, we have, sometimes we just read things, but we don't really think about what we read. Goodness and mercy will follow after us. Anybody hearing me? In other words, uh, we do not need to seek them. They will run after us. That's what it's saying. It's, goodness and mercy are going to run after me. This year in 2023, if we do what? If we get the great shepherd. And we apply this in our lives and we live this and have him as our shepherd this year. Then can, we can rest assured that goodness and mercy are going to run after us. Amen? Amen. We will experience the goodness of God because he is our shepherd. Yes. You know, and the, the, the last part of this verse, it says that uh, we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What that means, what the reference to that is God's house is his presence. We will dwell in his presence all the time. That is amazing. Think about that. Dwelling in his presence all the time. All the time. When we allow him into our lives and allow him to guide us, to lead us, to anoint us, to protect us, to provide for us. When we believe all of these things that he's doing for us, then we will abide in his presence. 2023 is going to be a year that we will experience Jesus as our good shepherd. And I believe this is a word that the Lord is giving us for this year. But like I said in the very beginning, it's not going to happen automatic. You got to believe that's what God has for you and receive it. Go through this psalm when you get home. Psalm 23, and begin to believe these things over your life, over your family. This is the year. This is my year. Let's stand to our feet this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. I want you to just close your eyes for a minute and begin to thank him. Over every one of these areas that we spoke about, begin to meditate and think of him as your shepherd providing for you, as your shepherd who is guiding you, as the shepherd who is protecting you, 
the shepherd who is restoring you, the shepherd who is anointing you, and the shepherd who is bringing goodness and mercy running after you. See these things as the shepherd blessing you with. He wants you to have all of these things. In spite of what may come this year, whatever problems may arise, whatever circumstances or situations that are bad or negative that may arise, whatever storm you may be that you may go through this year, always remember, if you've been following the Good Shepherd, then it's a path that He's taking you through. You're going to get out of it. Don't lose hope. You're going to get out of it, and you're going to get restored and anointed. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. I want you to get still. Don't let all those thoughts run through your head, through your mind. Get still before the Lord. We forget that He is our shepherd and He speaks. Listen to what He's speaking to you, what He's saying right now. I want you to get still before Him. Quiet your mind down. Let him take you to a place of rest, refreshing, still waters, an inner stillness where you can begin to hear his voice speaking to you, what he is saying to you right now. He may speak to you about your business, about your relationships, about your health, your finances, or He may just speak to you personally, telling you how much He loves you. Come to the place where you can hear His voice, the Good Shepherd, the Great Shepherd speaking to you. Father God, we just thank you this morning because you've been so good to us. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for being our great shepherd. I pray this morning for your people who are here, for the sheep that belong to you, Lord. They are yours. I pray for them that as the great shepherd, you will do as your word says, that this will be a year where you will be with them. You will provide for them. Even when the world says there's a shortage, you will provide supernatural provision. You're going to guide them in the midst of all the talk and all the confusion that is going on around them. You're going to lead them right through. You're going to guide them. In midst of all the persecution, you will protect them. They will have peace in the middle of the storm. This year, Lord God, you will restore what the enemy has stolen. The peace, the joy, the strength in their bodies, 
their inner strength, the finances, all that the enemy has stolen will be restored. You will restore them, heal the wounds, and restore. This will be a year where you will anoint your people with a fresh anointing, new anointing. I pray that you anoint them from this moment on. Right where you are, just put your right hand on your forehead and just say, Lord, anoint me. Father, right where they are, as they've taken a step of faith and laid their hands on their head, we pray that you would let the anointing flow into their lives where they are right now. A fresh anointing, a new anointing being imparted into their lives. From this day forward, they will notice something different in their lives. They will notice something has changed. They will notice, Father. This anointing will begin to break things off of their lives. It will help them to break things off of the lives of others. It will break the yoke. It's what your word says, Father. So from this day forward, a new anointing, a fresh anointing over their lives in Jesus' name. And goodness and mercy, Father. May it follow them all the days of their life, wherever they may be, that your goodness will be there, your mercy will be there. Even in times where it seems like they don't deserve it, your goodness and your mercy will be there. And every time they fall down, your goodness and your mercy will lift them back up. Lord God, we just pray that you will be with them right now. As they declare you and say, you are my great shepherd. And this is the year, 2023, that you will show yourself and manifest yourself as my great shepherd in my life and in my family. I have no reason to fear this year because you are with me. Thank you. We give you the praise. We give you the praise. We give you the praise. We give you the praise, God. And we declare that you are good. You are good. You are good. You are good. We declare it this morning, Lord. You are good. So good to us, Father. We thank you. And just sing it with me and say, God is so good. We're going to sing that this. God, you're so Yes, he is. God, you're so good. You're so good to me. Hallelujah. God, you're so voices tell them this morning thank you, Lord, for the blessing on your people this morning, Lord, as we declare that you are good. I thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for speaking to the lives this morning to every person that is here. We thank you, Holy Spirit, and pray you continue to lead us and guide us. We thank you. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated this morning.
Aleluia. How many are going to have Jesus as their good shepherd this year? Amen. We need to. We need to. When you go home, you get a hold of this song and you go through it. Don't let it depart. That's what the word says. You know, you shall read and meditate on this on this word day and night. It's a day and night. So meditate on the word and see how he is a good shepherd to you in every area of your life. And God, and you're going to see God's blessing upon your life in every area. We're going to give the opportunity to receive the tithes and the offerings this morning. And as you get ready for that, uh, with that, we're going to pray in just a minute. Invite those who are viewing online as well to give to the Lord as well. And um, in a minute, we'll pray for that. But I just want to give some announcements as you all are getting ready for that. Uh, just a reminder, once again, we have been announcing this. February the what again? Okay, you all have been listening. February the 5th, the hour is changing. Instead of 11, we're going to start at 10. Amen. Our services, we are combining our Spanish service and our English service into one, and it'll be starting at 10 a.m., starting February the 5th. Okay, and um, also wanted to let you know that uh, it's January, and in January we send out our uh, your statements when you've given. You know, we are a, a nonprofit organization, a 5013C, and uh, uh, so what you give is tax deductible. And if you do your income tax and you uh, use that, we're going to be sending those out before the month ends. I send everything through email. If you don't want it through email, you need to let me know, and I will have a printed report for you. I can print it out for you, but for the most part, we send it all through email. If I don't have your email, if you have never given it to me, you need to write it down, give it to me, put it in the offering basket so we can have your email, because we're going to be sending those out for those who use them, the income tax reports, the uh, contribution statements, I should say. We're going to be sending that out. Okay. Uh, we're going to pray right now for the tithes and the offerings. And uh, when we pray for that, I also want to pray for um, our 21 days of fasting because you know, we have been praying and we're going to pray for uh, a culmination of that. We've come to uh, the end of that, a celebration. And although some, some of you are still going to continue or because it's your 14th day, but we're going to pray for those who have uh, final today being the last day of that. We're Gonna, I want to pray over that. So if you're ready, lift up your envelopes. We'll pray for the offering first. Father, we just want to thank you this morning for all those who are giving, Lord God. As they give, Lord God, your word says they give according to what you have impressed in their hearts to give. And because of that, Holy Spirit, we thank you. And I pray a blessing over their lives, Lord. It is good seed that they are planting in good ground. And we believe it will bring forth a good harvest in their lives, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray your blessing over them. Amen. Now, Father, we want to pray for all those who have been fasting during the 21 days, the day being the last of this day. Father God, we thank you because during this time, Lord, we believe you have been attentive to our prayers. We believe that, Lord God, you have been hearing our cries. We believe you have seen us as we humbled ourselves through fasting. Lord God, we believe that you have seen, Lord God, all during this 21 days, Lord God. And you know the deepest desires of each one of us, Lord God, what we have been seeking you for. Father, so in Jesus' name, we are praying for breakthroughs, Lord God. We are praying for an answer to prayer, and we are thanking you for that, Lord God. We believe, Lord God, in Jesus' name, that the victory is ours, and it's not because of anything that we do through our own might, through our own power, but it, we believe it is by your Spirit. And your Lord, your Spirit lives in us. So we thank you for the victory because it is ours, it is ours, it is ours in Jesus' name, Father. And we thank you for it. We pray for those who are going to continue their fast, Lord God, because they're on their 14th day, that you continue to strengthen them, Lord God, for the, the remainder of the week that is coming, Father. We pray that you strengthen them and you continue to hear their prayers as well, their prayer requests and the desires of their heart. 
that you will bring an answer to that as well, Father. We thank you for these things in the name of Jesus. Amen? We believe it. Hallelujah. <laughs> for those who are ending their fast, or this is the last day of the fast tomorrow, you have my permission to eat tomorrow? <laughs> Actually, um, I don't know what kind of fast you are doing, but if you're doing a fast where you have not been eating, do not overeat tomorrow. Amen? You take it easy. Take it easy on what you eat and the quantity that you eat. Okay? Be careful with that. But uh, we thank the Lord for the breakthroughs that we have been receiving through that. And we'd like to... Uh, I haven't made room for it yet, but maybe next week or the following week, I'm going to send out a text to see who has one. I'd like to receive a couple of more testimonies and give testimonies again like we did that the previous uh, couple of Sundays ago. Uh, we had testimonies. We're going to do that again. I'd like to get at least two testimonies. It may be something that the Lord has done during the 21-day fast. I want to hear about it. Let us know, and we may give opportunity for that next week. You know, it's important for us to testify and tell others of what God has done. It encourages, amen? It lifts us up to know what God has done for somebody else. If God did this for them, He can do it for me. Amen? So we need to be encouraged in that. Anyway, I know you all are hungry and you need to go. You're not fasting like me? <laughs> okay, let me pray for you all this, this morning. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His face upon you and let His light shine on you. May the Lord give you peace. May He protect you and may He prosper you all the days of your life. You all are blessed this morning. God bless you. Before you leave, tell your neighbor, I am being restored. <laughs>